This is the Bartcast, a podcast about your supreme leader, Bart L. All right, here we go. All right. Uh, hey, everybody, it's the Bartcast. Hopefully, this is going out over the stream and everything's good. Yeah. Um, I'm PBS. Uh, this and, du- yeah, this is WR250 here. And basically, we're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about, but I am very pleased and excited to say that we will have Spooky Tim at the bottom of the hour. So that should be some fun. I'm complaining her said something about it, and I got a private message about it, so... Oh, okay. About something or other? Yeah, uh, they, the, the default is to be muted when you join the voice channel, so you have to unmute oh. yourself. Oh, okay. Yeah. And people are saying that I'm still... I can bump my volume up more if you guys really want. Yeah, mm-hmm. when you did it before, I didn't hear any difference. All right, we're going to try that, so so bear with me a minute. And I, are the Discord sounds going off? over the air yeah because i haven't figured out how to turn them off yet (laughs) it's okay is that better that's louder okay do you want me to crank it down a little bit well let's see what the chat room says all right hey chat room help us out tell me if i've gotten louder i could always turn myself down and turn discord up if i have oh good okay so it's better all right thanks guys appreciate it there we go New headsets can take me a while to work into it and know what it does. But hey, for twenty dollars, you too can sound like you're on a spaceship. So maybe that's going to work because I know there are more sci-fi nerds here than just me. So you know, we can all just pretend that. You know, <laughs> I'm totally fine. I'm totally down with that. Yeah. So you want? We covered the Vera thing. Yep. Um, and his threat to MV. That's so crazy. I mean, why does he care now? MV's been out of it for how many months? When did Bart? When did all this start? July? July 1st. Yeah. Fourth of July weekend, right? Yep, that's when it started. Yeah, so over a month now. He, there hasn't been a peep out of MV. He posted that one parody video, and now the only thing that's at Bell Gab is his three parody songs he did about Heather. Right. So the only thing I can think is that he's really convinced that Bart is MV. And, and he verified him. You guys remember that? Yeah, ver- verified. <laughs> Somebody, it was spooky. Tim, I'll have to ask him about it. He has his own little, he has his own little drop like that. It's hysterical. I mean, I like it. I like that he's gotten in and he's mixing it up with us. I was excited when he joined Belgab because I, I mean, I know who he is. So it was cool to see somebody that else that I've listened to just jump right in with us weirdos. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if I'm a weirdo, but maybe I am. Well, I shouldn't. I should refer to myself as a weirdo. You're right. I should not include you in that. That's that's unfair. But I should speak for myself when I say, with a lot of Bell Gab is on the eccentric end for sure. It doesn't mean any everybody, but you know. Yeah, we all have our our, our uh, how do I want to put our ex- yeah eccentricities. Yes, and it, I, I can't turn my cat off. So if you guys hear purring, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> that's because she knows you're podcasting, so she's got to sit on your MacBook and purr. Of course, that's how it always is. Yeah, they're talking about, I think they're talking about Falky in the chat room. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. we're not going to talk about Falky. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's that's sort of, I feel about that the way I kind of feel about, like, like ripping on someone's weight like it's the lowest common denominator yeah and if i have to talk about it because i'm flailing so horribly i will but it's not something i like to you know just pull out and run with yeah you want to spend spend a couple of minutes on uh, art's bell's death or oh yeah sure we can talk about art's death we didn't talk about that last time did we no we didn't um and i think it was just kind of less organized yeah last time 
Um, so since then, uh, it came out that Art's autopsy, right? That's what you're yeah, talking about. Yeah, the autopsy. Yeah, it came out that it was, uh, whether intentional or not, um, that it was from basically an overdose, right? Yeah. And the coroner ruled it accidental, so that's well, then, what I'm going you know, with. I mean, nobody would, I mean, how would they really know unless there was a note? Oh, that's something we should take a minute and cover, because apparently there are tapes out there of how they're talking about there being a note, and I really hope that's not true. I Just, would not think so, because they would have turned up by now. It, it's just... The sheriff's department would have said if there was a note, they probably would have found it. And I would have thought it. so. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I don't have any judgment either way about it, because if he decided to end his own life because he was in that much pain yeah it's not for me to say either way you know i'm just not that person but you know it took them forever to get that autopsy back too that's because uh nye county uses clark county for their coroner gotcha clark county is where las vegas is and their coroner is really busy in clark county it seems like there could be a lot of dead people in vegas that yeah seems, that seems true Wow, we have all kinds of people in chat now, too. Yeah. Good. Glad to see everybody in there. That's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, the Art Bell thing, I wasn't taken aback by it. I mean, like, he was, you know, he was an older dude. I mean, he was in pain. What are you going to do? Right. And you know? when you got a condition, it makes it hard to breathe to begin with. It's, And then you yeah. take medicine that makes it harder to breathe. You know, that's where you end up. Yeah, for sure. And there's nobody in the Discord chat like chatting. They're all in normal chat. Yeah, right? that's probably for the that's best. Right. I agree. Yeah. It's easier for me because then I don't really have to watch two screens because I do kind of still like to interact with the chat room. You know, that's how it is. Oh, people are people are plugging other stuff. That's kind of funny. Oh, the more drugs they scream for, the longer it takes. That makes sense. Yeah. Somebody said in chat. That totally makes sense. Yeah, I know. People have speculated some absolutely crazy stuff that's the internet for you and, and I'm not saying I'm like look I mean if there are tapes somebody's holding on to them and hasn't released them yet and that seems foolish I mean what, what are they waiting for you know I would buy that she was on the phone with somebody talk. I don't know because I've had my own run-ins with her right I could see it I could see her being on the phone and talking forever about it and I believe somebody was talking about um uh, what I'm, I'm totally derailing about the name that's it's escaping me. They were talking about, um, oh, Ira. She was talking to Ira for hours on end. Right. So, we'll see. I love this. I have to remember I don't have to answer every question that comes scrolling up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like, people like keep asking, like, who's the girl, who's the woman? I do, do I not sound like me tonight, guys? I'm sorry. You sound I, just I'm, a little bit different, so. But it's probably well, the different headset. I'm sure that's part of it, and I think my voice is a little deeper tonight. Don't worry, I'm not going trans or taking hormones. Um, I had somebody over yesterday who smokes, and we were outside for a long time, as in cigarettes. And I'm sure that's some of what's affecting my voice. I can almost do very white. It doesn't help that you've been sick all week either. No, and I'm actually, I feel fine now. Which is good. So, I know, riveting radio, you all... You, you guys all want to know, oh, people are saying it's new people who just haven't heard me before. That's why they were asking. Oh, okay. Hi, newbies. This is me. This is what I do. So, yeah. at any rate, is there anything else we want to hit before we bring Tim in? No, we can bring Tim in at any time. Uh, yeah, we can. How do we do that? He can just start talking. Oh, can he? Yeah. Hey. He's unmuted. Spooky Tim. Uh, I don't know if I have any voice left after the last couple of nights. <laughs> nice. How how are you, Tim? I'm um, I'm doing well. How about you guys? Do I sound okay? You sound great. Yep, you're uh, fine. Well, that's that's a that's a loaded statement. Let's wait and see where it goes. <laughs> well, I I've told you, and we haven't actually verbally ever talked, so this is cool. But I've listened to you since 2007, like well, around I'm, there. I appreciate that. So it was you and my mom listening in those early days. Absolutely. I found no. I'm just kidding. My mom never <laughs> listened to the show. Oh, <laughs> there it is. No, I found you because I was so excited. I'm sure you remember, too, like, what, how exciting it was. Actually, all of us were in the same age bracket, sort of. How exciting it was to get an, iP an iPod. Like, so, trying to find stuff to listen to at work, and I was looking for paranormal stuff. And 
it, it was you and I'm so happy that it's still you and the same crew, basically. That, yeah, for your pretty crew, much. Yeah. yeah. We've only added, you know, haven't really subtracted. Uh, Moniz is there most weeks, you just never hear him say anything. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, he's the only person that like has a has a co-hosting spot on a radio show that doesn't talk on the radio, which is, you know, it was fine in the early days when we were just podcast only, but ever since we started doing the videos, I get a lot of emails that say, why does that guy just sit there and not say anything? <laughs> I don't know. You'd have to ask him. And his insight was always good. Like, I don't know. Like, that's, that's funny. I think people, uh, you know, the my co-hosts have have told me that uh, I kind of dominate the conversation and, and they don't really find a way to work themselves in. Uh, I think that's kind of BS, but whatever. No, that's on who that's on whoever you're working with because if you notice, just even listening to us, WR and I, and this is the first time we've done this together, he got assertive and got in there, you know, because you have to. Like, when you're doing this, you, you don't realize how long you've been talking. I mean, I don't, so I get where you're coming from, you know. Like, I like to think that I'm a good host and I can carry a conversation for two hours, but you can't always carry a conversation for two hours. And part of the reason that you have other people in the room is to make sure that you're never lacking for, you know, something to say. And so I hope that they will jump in and and bail me out, especially on the nights when I'm drowning. But I think in the end, it all kind of works out. Everybody has their their part that they play and everybody seems pretty happy with it. I, I, I just wish the camera wasn't on me as much as it is, but because if they talked more, the camera would move to them, but instead, Matt Costa just keeps it pointed at me and then I can't pick my nose. <laughs> That's a bummer. You can't scratch. You can't do anything. It's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I've done the video thing a couple times uh, back on Belgab with uh, Curtis, uh, the Mug King. Like, we did some video stuff on Halloween and it drove me nuts because I was like, Man, I can't do anything. Like if I, if I move the wrong way or if, if I sneeze, you know what I mean? It's I don't know. I didn't like it. I'm not opposed, but I'm not for. You know, not that we need to talk about that. Sorry. Well, I mean, it's, it's just for me. It's you know, every once in a while, I I want to take a drink or, and I just feel like that shouldn't be something people are seeing on camera. But then the other side of it, the other argument of that is people are trying to watch the show in its natural habitat. So if that's something that happens, you know, you should be showing it to the viewers. So it's kind of a catch twenty two. I think uh, a lot of people want it to be an inside look at radio, and I think I kind of want it to be uh, a polished television version of the product. So it's a we kind of have to serve both masters with that a little bit. Yeah, and I get that. Like, for me, I'd rather not watch the video because part of radio, for me, magic. Like, I want to be in my head. Like, I don't know if I want to see it, you know? But I get where you're coming from, too, and you have a different generation of people who are watching YouTube. Well, so and part of that, part of the YouTube decision was because so much of what we're talking about when we're talking about paranormal phenomena involves showing people, involves, uh, you know, we had to describe videos and describe photographs as part of the podcast, as part of the radio show. So it became easier to just find a way to throw it up there and, and have people see it for themselves instead of directing them to go to a link or what have you. So it, it does add that extra uh, little bit of... Uh, multimedia that makes the show a little run a little bit smoother for the person that's listening. Yeah, yeah I could see that too. I just I'm old school, you know. And I, as far as like looking at evidence, it'd be really useful, like you were talking about. But that's I think it's amazing that you're you are basically I'm going to say something that's going to get everybody riled up, but not really. Um, you're basically the guest host for Dave Schrader. That's fantastic. How did that happen? Dave just asked me. Uh, I've known Dave for a long time. Uh, Dave has. Uh, he started his show, uh, well, the original show, Darkness on the Edge of Town Radio. He started that three weeks before we started Spooky South Coast. And it's it's funny because Spooky South Coast was conceived in the late summer, early fall of 2006. I'm sorry, 2005. And we were told we could go on the air anytime, whenever we were ready. And we thought about trying to get ready to go on that October, but we didn't feel like we were fully prepared. So we, we took a couple of months to kind of lay out the show and build the show. And we, we picked January 26th as the date because our station would run football on Saturday nights uh, when the playoff games were on Saturday nights. So we said, all right, the 26th, that's when those football games start. That's when we'll launch. And uh, had we not done that, we probably could have beat Darkness Radio to the paranormal radio game and i would have you know had had that seniority on dave but uh, as as it turns out it worked out for the best because we we even weren't ready on the 26th either but we we made it work anyway and so i think he and i were probably my space friends at first and you know that just led to other social media channels and then we we've worked some conventions together and i i ran an event uh out here in massachusetts that he came as one of the special guests for so 
we've kind of, you know, worked on the same circles for, for over a decade. And then when I, th- I think it's no secret, people who were on Bell Gab saw that when Heather left Midnight in the Desert, you know, I, I threw my hat in the ring and told Keith I would be willing to do it. And, uh, and, and it did kind of come down. I, I like to think that Keith was interested in having me involved because we had, we were playing phone tag back and forth. And, uh, he had talked to me about, you know, going with Dave, but saying he might be interested in adding something down the line with me. I don't think he'll mind me saying that, giving away that little bit of, no, I'm sure uh, it's good. That little bit of information. But, and so, you know, Keith, Keith has been running spooky south coast on on dark matter since the very beginning of the network so he knows you know what i am and he knows how we do things so i think that he thought that i would be a good fit and dave thought i'd be a good fit so i get to be that guy if they need me to be that's seriously it's so great like i was very happy to hear that i had i've caught part of a show and i haven't listened to all the rest of it i've you know been doing that real life thing um, so yeah, I've been kind of away all the time yeah i've been kind of out of the loop on it but i was excited about it because i you know I've listened to you for years. I, I, on and off with Dave, like I didn't dislike him, but like, it just was a different style. You know, um, I've listened to a lot of his stuff in the past too. And I think what you guys are doing now product wise could really go somewhere because it's, it's being handled in a professional manner and you already have an audience. So to me, this can only go up, but that's just my opinion. I think that, I think that Dave's approach and I've, I've noticed this with, the Midnight in the Desert program as opposed to the Darkness Radio program in the past. And I think as, as Dave's audience has grown, I think he's become a little bit more of a uh, intentionally polished host. I think he's giving people, you know, he still offers his insight. He still offers his opinions. He still controls the conversation. But I think he takes things from more of a professional approach. And he's not as goofy as he could be as some of the episodes of darkness radio with him and Tim were in the past where they would, you know, they'd really just kind of let go and and have a lot of fun. And I think he's being cognizant of the fact that uh, he's new to a lot of this audience and he has to kind of gain their trust before he, and it's funny to say about Dave before he lets his hair down, Uh, but, but, but that will come. And I think people will start to see a lot of that. I can't, I can't be that way. I can't be completely serious all the time. It's just not in my nature. Uh, so I tried the last few. Uh, I tried the last few nights to try and be as straight with it as I could, uh, just because I want to keep the tone of what they're doing with Midnight in the Desert. But normally, if you're talking to me at one o'clock in the morning, I'm I'm a lot goofier than I was the last couple of nights. Well, and that makes sense. I mean, you're trying, and that's cool. See, that's. That to me says all I need to know, because if if you're trying to basically go with what they're doing, I think that's where it failed before all of this changed, is that you had somebody who who didn't do that. Like, you find your style, and then if you're filling in for somebody, that's cool. Like, I'm kind of excited now to really give it a listen when I get done later. I I, See, that's what really bothered me about how this whole thing started, because I honestly think that if had Heather, first of all, when she got that opportunity, if she had kind of not so much worried about being art part two and instead had found her own voice. And, and I can tell you that I, I didn't listen when she took over. I stopped listening I because I, 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 I felt it was phony. I felt it was, uh, and I didn't know, you know, redacted. I, I wasn't on bell gab back then. So I didn't know anything about her. I just knew that she was the person that was working with art. And I know that I had reached out to art and said, Hey, if you ever need a, a fill in host, I'd be happy to do it. And and he wrote back. He said, you know, somewhere down the line, that might be something that we need. Uh, so she steps into the into the show and doesn't really develop her own voice. Tries to carry on the exact same. And it, you can understand that to a degree. You can understand some percentage of needing to keep what the audience is familiar with and what the audience is tuning in for. But it eventually reaches a point where it it got, it got creepy. Oh yeah, it, for sure. The tone, the inflection, the use of the words, the, the it, just, it just it sounded so creepy and, and, and forced. But then you start to think to yourself, how can somebody be forcing something that often? Like, how do you remember to say things the way that art would say it every single time that you have to say it without slipping up? And I started to realize it's I, I think it's 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 a, a delusion where she thinks she's art. Oh, that's and, scary. <laughs> and and if that's the case, you know, that's just not something that I w- I didn't want to hear somebody doing an impression of art, but I really didn't want to hear somebody who thought that they were art. I wanted to hear somebody that was going to be able to add their own twist to it. 
And so I didn't find that, and I stopped listening. And I tried giving, you know, I, as everybody was, I was interested in the train wreck that was whatever sure. became of her time on uh, on that other network. And it just was, it, it was silly, but it was painful. And I would alternate between feeling bad for her and, and feeling bad for the people who are tied into her and, and are being used by her. But that's, I mean, I would never trash another host publicly, but this has gone beyond just something that I can stay quiet about. No, and, and, and obviously we want to give you a platform to talk about whatever you want to. Before you get out of here, I definitely want to talk to you about the Michael Barrow stuff because that's, we, we have to talk about that. But I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. You've been very professional. And again, I've only interacted with you, like on the board, we talked a little bit, we messaged a little bit back and forth. But I don't see you being that guy who trashes other people without, like, the, you're not going to do it without provocation. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just don't see it. And that's the problem is if you do provoke me, then I'm, I'm going to lash back. And it's, it's happened a few times. Uh, over the, I've been very lucky over the course of the last, you know, almost 13 years that we've been doing Spooky South Coast that I've, I get along with everybody. I generally tend to get along with everybody. But if somebody, you know, pisses me off, then you've got my attention now, and I'm, I'm going to be paying attention to what you're doing. And what happened, you know, in all of those years, it was really only if somebody would attack me or attack somebody on my show or somebody that I'm close with. You know, it was generally from a, a defensive position. I've, I've never gone on the offense against anybody, and I've, I've never felt like I should do that. That's just not something that you do. You know, you, you would never hear uh, about... Well, I, I can't say this anymore because we live in a different climate now. But I'd say you never hear about one talk show host going after another talk show host on TV news. But they do it all the time now. But right. uh, so that that was just the way that I I looked at it. It's it's okay to acknowledge. See, some radio stations will tell you don't acknowledge any other show. So if my station management felt like it, they could tell me don't ever talk about coast to coast. Don't ever mention Art Bell or George Norrie or any of this other stuff. But nobody's ever told me that. So I have no problem acknowledging those that are that are in the same realm and of course have the bigger platforms and those who have come before I have no problem giving credit and uh, and sometimes I will you know offer criticism but I've never openly attacked somebody which is what made the Vera thing uh, especially ridiculous to me because when he decided to start attacking he didn't give me the opportunity to fight back which is the biggest what but this is this is open language, right? On, yeah. On, oh yeah, on, okay. we're uncensored. Yeah, go for it. All right, he's the he is probably the biggest pussy I've ever dealt with <laughs> in all my time of being involved in the paranormal world. To 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 lob a grenade at somebody on Twitter and then instantly block them before mm. they could have the chance to reply is the pussiest thing that I've ever seen in my life. First of all, it's Twitter. How badly am I going to hurt you on Twitter? Right. That you can't just wait and take it and you know at least let me make my counter argument and but uh but instead you know he decided to to make that move so as far as i'm concerned uh he's public enemy number one i will not go on my show and blast the guy because that would be unprofessional but i have no problem going on uh, internet chat boards and blasting the shit out of him well right and this is the bart cast about al gab so you can feel free to blast him if you'd like you know this is and by the way i'm happy to say that you're the first person i've ever interviewed so that's kind of cool i've never well, done this so it's kind of fun. But, no, as far as he goes... You're you doing know, a great and, job. And, and I'm not just saying that so you won't say shit about me on Twitter. <laughs> no, it's fine. I wouldn't anyway. But I feel... WR, is there anything you want to ask Tim? I feel like we're totally hogging. Like, I'm totally hogging him. No, you're doing good. Keep rolling. All right. Just making sure. You know, it's, it's that dominant thing, man. Tim gets it. Because I get going and I go. Like, you can't... It's hard to turn that off. It was funny when you said that earlier. I'm like, I totally get it. I'm with you. But as far as attacking somebody and then not giving them any way to defend themselves or say anything back, he's an idiot anyway. I mean, and what what is his what is he? He's got this tiny little network. You know, well, for, well, uh, you want to talk about something that pissed me off though? How about the other night uh, after I hosted uh, the first night on Thursday? I'm driving home from because I did I did the show from my radio station. Uh, so that I wouldn't have to come home and be in my home office with the air conditioning running and all that. I know that uh, Keith and the and the dark matter ne- uh, the dark matter audience are very particular about sound quality. So I said I'm going to stay here all night long in the office. I took a nap on the couch, woke up, did the show. Driving home at three in the morning, I'm listening to Heidi Hollis on Coast to Coast AM, and when 
George brings her on, the first thing she says is, oh, I'm still doing my show on the LNM network. And I said, great. He just got a plug on Coast to Coast AM for his shitty network. And that's what this that's what they're looking for. And that's what this is all about. This is not about him going on some kind of righteous quest. This is not about him even trying to get even at, at MV or at Keith or at anybody. This is about him trying to get people to talk about his stupid network, which everybody has been doing now for months. Everybody's been giving him attention, and, and it, it doesn't matter if it led to subscribers. It doesn't matter if it led to money. All he wants is for people to be talking about him one way or another, and that's why he does what he does. And that's why he brought Heather in. Anybody that looked and saw what happened not only with Keith, but with, uh, you know, the aliens are coming to Earth guy that she <laughs> yeah. was briefly with there. Yeah. Like, anybody that watched that knew it was destined for disaster. And the minute she pulled that first, I can't go on tonight routine, he had to know what was coming. But he didn't care. He got in bed with her so that he could get the attention and get the subscriptions of people that wanted to pay attention uh, to her show. And his network would benefit from that. And then it ended up blowing up in his face. And, and I think in the long run, the only reason he keeps bitching about it is because he knows that just keeps giving people, you know, it just keeps having people talk about him even more. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I think that's exactly what's happening. And I, I don't even know, like, <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that guy to begin with. But I would have been enraged had I heard that. I would have been like, seriously, this guy is getting, na- he just got to plug on a national show. Like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. And then he had his whole little rant on his show. Like, I don't, but that was funny too, because this was a few weeks ago. He had, he was going to come clean about Heather or whatever he said. And he said, the, and what was funny is that people on our board are smart. You know how they are. You're on the board. They figured out that he inserted his little message into a pre recorded show. That's how lazy he was. <laughs> and, you know, listen, I don't want anybody to think that I'm, uh, you, you know, coming on here just to, to, to satisfy the Elgab audience and to, to play the game that everybody plays on the board where, you know, this is, I look at this site as a place to speak freely and I look at this as an opportunity to speak freely. And, you know, I don't want Keith or Dave to hear this and say, uh, maybe we shouldn't have him come back because this is how right. I honestly feel. And if this, this is how I have to be about this and, and get it out of my system. Uh, again, I'm never going to go and, and publicly bash somebody. I right. really could have, I could certainly take my audience of, however many thousands more I have than LNM and and turn them against this guy if I felt like doing that because so many of them would agree with me about the hypocrisy of it all and about the fact that here's a guy who is, you know, basically all he has is a, a green screen and an eBay podcast microphone and thinks that he's better than everybody. And if if I wanted to, to make his life miserable, I could. But it seems like his life is already pretty miserable already, so I'll just stay back and let nature take its course. Yeah, and again, like we, you know, we didn't have you on. Like I, I was actually really excited when um, the producer, the Bart L producer, like just sent me a message. Like, do you want to talk to Tim for a half hour? Yeah, I'd love to. Sure, why not? You know, that sounds good. And uh, of course, you're not coming on here to do that, but we're talking about it. You know what I mean? Like we didn't set this up. I mean, I know a lot about your show. I know a lot about the paranormal. So we, you know, we talk about what we talk about, and you. I haven't said anything that, in my opinion, should get you kicked off of anything. No, but I, I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm also not somebody that can be... I, listen, I just spent 18 months working in a newsroom uh, dealing with, uh, you know, issues that normally when I had my old Saturday morning talk show, I would talk about on a regular basis. And, and I'm not saying, you know, one way or another what my positions were on things, but I could not express my positions. Yeah. I, could, I had to keep myself neutral because I was in the newsroom. I couldn't even go on social media and talk about these things. So, you know, I've learned over the years that you have to kind of uh, fit yourself into a role in order to be a professional. But when it happens to get to the point where uh, you're, you're lobbing the attacks and not allowing people to kind of uh, have the opportunity to at least make a statement in their defense, because all I would have really wanted to have said was I would have wanted to say, hey, you, I didn't like the accusation that you made that I was somehow tied into taking money Bart coins aren't real. It's a joke, you idiot. That's all I wanted to be able to say because I didn't want anybody to think that there was any kind of... Because basically what he did is he was... He was attacking the integrity of my show. You can go after me all you want, but you're not going to go after the integrity of my show because my show doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people that listen every week. 
And so if you want to come on and attack the integrity of that on social media, you've got to give me the chance to explain to you what happened. And that's exactly what it was that that ticked me off more than anything. It was trying to claim that I was in some sort of financial cahoots with Bart. Listen, I don't want any money from Bart. I just want some of those goddamn desserts because those look amazing. Oh, don't they? Why are we not talking about food? That's what we should be talking about. Are you kidding? Well, you knew I was going to have to. I had to at least make one food reference before we left. Absolutely. I mean, and I think that's it, too. I think some of these people, even the fringe group and all of that, they don't like it's like they don't have a sense of humor and don't understand that we're joking. And I know that I think at least with Vara, his whole beef is that he is convinced that Bart is MV. So somehow you're in cahoots with MV. I'm like, but nobody's in cahoots with anybody because it's all a joke. Right. That's what's so funny about all of this is yeah. everybody has gotten so immensely butthurt over a joke, over a, a parody that, you know, uh, to, that, that's, that's what made me laugh when I saw that original uh, tweet that he was going to expose who Bart L was. I was like, it doesn't matter who, you know, Bart L is Negan. We are Bart L. Right. It, and that's what makes it so much fun. It's, it's not, even if, if, if you pulled back that curtain and, and correctly explained who he was and, and got everybody to, to, to know exactly, you know, to believe that you were actually right in your investigation, what did that do? What did that prove? You still are fighting with a fictional character in the end. Oh, of course, yeah. And that, that to me, is what was so amazing about all of it. That's what, and see, this is a, I think this is an intelligence thing because all of us who are smarter and looking at this, we're dying because he's literally taking her website and making it identical. It, those were some good days when that stuff was going on. And it, it's brilliant, in my opinion. So the fact that some idiot doesn't realize it's a joke. Ugh. And also, let's point out that the joke, the whole reason the joke was created was to poke fun at a real-life situation that this guy decided to insert himself into. Right. So, who in, yeah, who in their sane mind would have taken Heather on? You know what you're getting. I mean, it's already... And we've talked about this. I, I know I've talked about it with several people, but the whole thing with, like... Like, you're talking about how professional you are, right? So the fact that she publicly told everybody what was going on with Keith. Like, she's cancer. Like, if you want to run a serious program, in my opinion... Because how can you work with her? She's not reliable. Right. And that's the problem. That's the problem from the very beginning is that she's not mentally stable, in my opinion. And which is fine. I mean, that's that's fine. If you have issues and if if somehow the death of art caused you to have all of these, uh, you know, emotional breakdowns and it's hard for you to get over. I, I can appreciate that and I can understand that. I, I have a hard time believing that it's that hard of a loss for you, but whatever, you know, I don't know your emotional state and I don't know the connection that you had with Art Bell, you know, off the air. So that's, that's your thing. My issue is when you decided to utilize everything that happened as a way to kind of arm people and tell them that they had to make a choice. Then what I really started to get upset with this is when you started taking money from people. Right. Yep. And then didn't deliver on what you promised to give them. So those people, those, you know, nine, 95 people that listen to her show or however many were actually tuning in every night, those people are people that are interested in this topic. Those are people who are interested in the things that I have to say and that Dave has to say and that Dave Scott has to say and Jim Malliard and anybody else that is hosting a right. paranormal radio show. And now what you're doing is you are basically hoaxing them. You're ripping them off, so now they're going to think that all of us are a bunch of rip-off artists, that all of us are a bunch of con artists, and you're hurting the greater... As and not only that, maybe not even paranormal people, but maybe anybody that decides to try to launch an online talk show and be an alternative to program terrestrial radio and has to work through a subscription service in order to afford to keep that up. Now you've basically made everybody else look like an asshole because you acted like an asshole, and that's going to make people weary to pull the, the trigger and hit that PayPal button to subscribe. So you're screwing with people's livelihoods because you're just nothing but an insecure little girl yeah exactly well preach on brother I, I i'm with you because it makes everybody less credible and that's bad for us as listeners look i don't host a prayer normal show i never have i do this kind of stuff but me as a listener you're, you're gonna hurt everything it, and that i'm not cool with she had so many people there were so many of us because i know people in radio too who told her who to talk to when she took over for art and she didn't listen to any of us like I tried with her too, you know. It, that's what's frustrating to me. 
you know, it's like you didn't, you you were handed this opportunity that a lot right. of us would love to have, and you didn't do anything with it. You were handed an audience that people like Dave Schrader had already put in the work to earn. Yep. And you didn't appreciate it enough to to be genuine for that audience. You basically just wanted to. Uh, I don't. I don't. She was trying to scam people, but I don't think it was a financial scam. I think it was an ego scam. I think she was just trying to make herself feel like she was as important to art. She was trying to be that legacy. But you didn't serve the audience, and that's where I have a problem. And I I have a problem with any host that doesn't serve the audience. I, I don't like everything that every other paranormal host does or says or the guests that they bring on. But as long as they're doing it for the good of the audience... As long as they're doing it because they think that it makes it a better program, more entertaining and more informative for the listener, then I can understand it and I can be by it. I, l- listen, I, I don't. I disagree with George Norrie on some of the topics that they cover, some of the approaches that he takes, uh, how much he's flip flopped on things over the years, depending on what the what the tone of the audience is. But at the, you can never say that George Norrie does a show for himself and his own views. His number one priority, and you can tell in the way that he does it, is entertaining the audience. We can fight about what portions of the audience he's trying to talk to and which sure. ones he should be talking to. Uh, you can say that he turned his back on some of the you know original art fans to go in a different direction, but he is still trying to serve that audience. And so those are the kind of shows that I have respect for. When you do a show just because A, you can, and B, you think you should, that's not enough for me, and that's really not enough for you to be doing a show. No, I completely agree. I don't know how much longer we have you for, and I want to make sure before we get out of here you can plug your stuff. I'm not trying to get rid of you. You, but I, you can keep me for as long as you want to go. Fair? So let's, Yeah, oh, cool, good. I just I wasn't sure, and I was trying to do that. Like I'm actually you know, trying to do somewhat real radio today. <laughs> so I'm looking at my computer. I'm like, I think somebody's told me a half hour, but I'm not sure. But I well, I know. I'm soapboxing a little bit, so I'm sure that there's other things that you, you want to talk about. So. No, I'm good, because I tend to roll. Like I didn't write anything down. Like We had a couple topics before you came on, just so we had something to talk about. But I usually freeform it. Um, it just works better, especially if it's like if I'm going with somebody and it's going well. It's fine. I mean, I have, I have seen a few uh, questions uh, from the chat room. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I, do wanna, I just do want to address one. Uh, I believe it was Mr. Apnea that asked me about Mr. Massachusetts. He still calls into the shows every day. I just don't, you know, all the other talk shows on, on my radio station. I just don't think that he's been calling into Spooky South Coast. Uh, I don't know why. We seem to be pretty respectful of him. I still don't believe that he's going to win a billion dollars. Uh, that he won a billion dollars, but uh, he's kind of toned down that rhetoric when he calls. Now he just he just calls in and talks about topics that are on the air and and doesn't start talking about this uh, imaginary lottery winning. So maybe he's finally come to the acceptance that uh, he didn't win. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, uh, this guy has been calling into every one of the shows on my station and started calling into Spooky South Coast as well, claiming that he won Publishers Clearinghouse and. But then they didn't meet up their agreement to pay him, and he had to send them money in order to get paid and all this stuff. And uh, it's just been an ongoing thing where the money and the prizes has just been growing and growing and growing by the week. So the last time that I spoke to him, it was over a billion dollars and two cars. That's hilarious. (laughs) Wow. I don't even know what to say to that. See, I was totally lost. (laughs) Listen, if somebody like that calls into your show, especially if you have a show where you talk about weird stuff, you just roll with it. You just let it keep going. You don't try to cut the guy off and tell him, you know, obviously you're full of shit. You keep it going and you say, okay, well, what are you going to do with that money? And how are you, you know, like that's that's the good stuff. That's the Art Bell stuff. That's the stuff that when somebody called in with him with the craziest story, <clears throat> Mel's Hole, he just kept yeah. asking questions and kept it going and turned it into something that became a recurring topic on the program. Yeah, and that, see, that's what I love about art, and I was going to go there, too. Like, my favorite thing to still listen to, I still love the Area 51 call-in show. It's still amazing. And you know that most of those people were full of shit, if not all of them. But that's what made it great, you know? I, I'm going to I'm gonna mention something here to people, and, and I know it'll probably get me uh, blacklisted from some shows. But have you ever heard of something called Premiere On Call? No. So Premiere On Call is a service that's offer, offered by Premiere Radio Networks which is the parent company that owns Coast to Coast AM. Premiere On Call is a service where if you have a talk show, you can subscribe to the service, and they will have voice actors call into your show with predetermined questions or topic discussions to lead the discussion in a way that you want it to go. So basically what they are is they're professional plant callers. 
And yeah. this is this is being operated by the company that owns Coast to Coast AM, but swears that they never actually use any of those on Coast to Coast AM. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. <laughs> just the next time you're listening to a to Coast to Coast AM, I would take into account, keep that in the back of your mind, and, and sit there and listen to that, and say, you know, this really sounds like it could be one of these plant callers. Yeah, that's funny because come to think of it that I, there's somebody I've talked to in radio and I remember her telling me about that like where one of the things they would do occasionally is like rival people would have like they they would pay callers to call in to talk to her like like to get her work done just hilarious stuff like that so I, I totally buy it I, well I, I like that though I like prank calls prank calls are uh, totally different right. than, I, than I think plant calls uh, yeah. I like it when you know, if somebody wants to call in to kind of, uh, not that I'm encouraging prank calls on my show, please don't do that, but, you know, if somebody does, it's all in how you handle it, and that's how you can kind of prove your chops as a host, is how you respond to that. And I think that when, you know, when Midnight in the Desert can finally take calls, I think you'll start to see that, uh, you know, there might be a few of those now and then, but you'll get to see how Dave handles them. And I've heard him handle them in the past, and it's great because you know he's he's in on the joke for a few minutes, but he doesn't let it derail the show. And that's that's what I think is uh, going to be, uh, you know, that's going to take the, the program to a whole other level when they're able to to start doing that. Which you know I'm sure will come eventually down the line. Uh, I think the you know I could have done it last night with with my capabilities, so I thought, and then I couldn't even reconnect the guest when the guest disconnected. So. You know, it's it's a very tricky uh, bit of technology to finally figure out, but they're working on it. Well, that, yeah, somebody in chat asked, so good job. Yeah, I, and by the way, if there's anything in chat like you just did and you want to answer, feel free to. I do that too where I'm looking at it. But no, I, I asked Dave about the phone calls. At one point, apparently they were getting bombarded with idiot, like just people that just weren't. They, they were having issues, I think, with some of the fringe people calling in too and just wasting well, yeah. time. Yeah. You know, and he just wanted to put a stop to it because I. I love listening to call-in shows. So, and I'll, I'm going to be really curious to listen to the rest of what I started hearing you because you normally, you guys normally take call, you know. Yes, yeah. Normally, normally we do. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I, that's got to be interesting. Uh, well, I, uh, but I also like it too when, uh, you know, the callers might call in with a different question or perspective than the the way that I'm taking the conversation. You know, I, I, I'm not like Coast to Coast AM where we'll talk to somebody for three hours and then the last hours we'll take calls. I like to say that the lines are open throughout the entire show. I just ask that if you're going to call in while we're talking to a guest, that you keep it, you know, focused on what the guest is talking about. But the rest of the time, it's kind of like paranormal open lines. And, and I, for years, I tried to get an episode once in a while where we could say tonight we're just taking open lines the phone lines are open call in with whatever you want to talk about and we'll just let the night go where it takes us and you know what i would never get any calls but when i started when i started going on bell gab and i started talking you know interacting with everybody on bell gab and everybody started coming and hanging out in our chat room i noticed that i could do an open lines call-in show and get really good intelligent calls and so you know it's something that we're going to work into our programming more often but you know generally you know I love to hear from the audience. I love to hear their questions. And we do have a live chat room with our show each night, which is something that I think, you know, they should. I, I know that they have the wormhole uh, going with uh, with Midnight in the Desert, but I'm, I'm just sitting there itching, watching, you know, hosting the show and being like, where's the chat? There's no chat. Where's the chat? I need a chat. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, as a host, it's funny, too, even doing like this little stuff that I do now and again this way. I rely on chat so much, which is dangerous to do. But. I can at least look if I'm flailing like you were talking about and there's people they're they're talking there's stuff to work with. So yeah, I would imagine that's frustrating with no chat for but, but it's with that stuff. but it's different for the Bartcast because for the Bartcast you're ta- the audience that you're talking to are the people that are in the chat. So right. it really kind of makes sense to have that back and forth. I don't like when some of these, you know, supposedly professional paranormal shows are just sitting there talking to their chat room or their Discord chat. Oh, of okay. course, like yeah, yeah, if we were a bigger show, like if if we were doing the type of radio that you have done doing, of course not. You got to be able to carry it elsewise, but since this is our audience, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I'm I'm thinking of a certain show with, uh, you know, uh, its own network, with the weird letters yeah. that everybody always mixes up, and you know what I'm talking about. The one, I, the one that advertises for Troll Spray. Yeah. Yes, I do, and that that's why I love that there have been screenshots and like there have been screenshots coming from that Discord because I can't go into anything under any name because somehow they know. But yeah, they block like, you by IP address. Yeah, I was going to say it was you in the early days who like got blocked out. because. And by I the did. way, how, I have something to ask you. How did you ever get to Bell Gap? 
How did that happen? Oh, I've known about Belgab forever. Uh, you know, I've, I've for as long you know, I remember hearing uh, references to it. You know, listening to the show and listening to uh, just seeing pointed references to it on the internet all the time. So I knew about it for a long time, but it wasn't until all this drama started with with Art's death that I said, "Hmm, I wonder what they're talking about on Belgab about this." And then whoosh, I just got sucked in. It happens like that. I I found it, and I've told this story a lot because I found at the time. Uh, RMV was running a stream of Coast to Coast and with old art shows and I was so excited because I art was done by then I mean I listened to him when he was on the first time around in the 90s because I'm old you know I'm in my 40s so but then there was nowhere to find him you couldn't listen to him so uh, MV was running a stream it got me to I think it was Coast Gab at that time or right after and then it was just the people were really smart that were posting there and it took me a good while before I posted anything because you know how Bell Gab is Right, but I think I maybe it's having the um, the foresight of knowing what it was all about, kind of from what I'd heard about it. But you know, once you realize that in general, it's really kind of all just a bunch of uh, it's kind of just all shtick. But that the people generally care about each other. They get worried if somebody doesn't post for a couple of days. But you know, the, you may pick on each other and, and tear each other apart, and people are going to come into my chat room on Saturday night and make fun of me. But it's all in good fun, and it's. It doesn't matter because they're showing up to support you, even if they're going to pick on you and pretend to be, you know, fake Falky and and <laughs> put any, all that difference. At least they're there to show you that support. So it's 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 our own twisted way of of being a family, uh, in a way that people just don't normally interact with each other. But it's the way that we all have to interact with each other to feel comfortable with each other, and 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 that's what I like about it. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Like, I, it got me into doing podcasting. It's where I learned about. You know, a lot of different radio show hosts. It inspired, you know, my writing. Like, I don't know. It did a lot for me, like, in, in the time I was on it, you know. And just to take a step back for a minute, you were telling us uh, how you got pretty much banned from being into the in the Discord. Uh, uh, I found a way around that. Oh, thanks did you? To, uh, thanks to a, a friend of mine who I won't name. Uh, but I will tell everybody how to do it. I won't tell you. I'm not. I'm not. Let me make this clear before I, before I end up in another video. <laughs> I'm not telling people to go, uh, although, can you get verified twice? I don't know. Probably. He's like a double, a double verification might, might be the ultimate goal here. But if you, if you want to go into a Discord chat and your IP address has been blocked, uh, the Tor browser, T-O-R, yeah, uh, sure. D- download that, and that has been able to let me go back. And I just, I just don't bother anymore because it's, 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 it's sad. It's a sad, sad place. And uh, and I feel bad for the people that are in there because I don't think that they realize that there's something better out there than uh, than what they're being. It's like it's like if I gave you uh, it's like if I gave you if you if I gave you a Hires root beer and you drank that Hires root beer and said, "Wow, I really love root beer," and I never told you that there's something called A and W or Virgils. You know, I didn't let you know that there was yeah. actually way better root beer, and for the rest of your life, you just drank Hires or, or even worse, Mug. You know, well, it's that's all that you know. Yeah. You don't know that there's something better, and I think that that's where a lot of those folks are kind of trapped. Oh, I agree, absolutely. They, yep. they also realize that you know, really, really good radio. It uh, it doesn't ask for you to give them donations to stay alive. No, it doesn't need it. it it'll survive on its own. Yep, I agree. Oh man, there's something I was totally going to ask you, but I'm I'm I was reading the chat, and they're all they're all giving me shit because I said it in my 40s that I'm old, and clearly I've touched a nerve. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. But no, I mean, no, I don't know. Like, I, it, his paranormal radio getting back to things that are horrible. Yeah, how do we get those people to like your stuff and Dave's stuff? Like, I, I, just, I don't know because when I see the numbers that he pulls in, I, I, I wonder to myself, like, how is this even possible? First of all, how does he get those guests? Like, he right. has pretty good guests a lot of the time. I mean, some of them are people that would only be able to do that show, but some of them are, you know, intelligent people who uh, maybe I've had on my show or I've heard in other programs that should know better. I mean, are you that much of a whore for your product that you can sit there and listen to this guy mumble his way through a two hour show just to be able to get the word out there? I listen, I'll do any show that anybody asks me to right once, but if it's not good, I'm going to find a way not to, you know, I'm not going to tell you that you were terrible, but I just will be busy every single time that you ask me after that. Because right. it's not worth your time to put yourself out there and have to deal with a terrible host that 
first of all, doesn't make any sense, but always seems to find a way to make things about himself in the long run. And yeah. and that's that's what I found with a lot of that stuff, and and not just that show, but with a lot of paranormal shows that are out there, because you know, blog talk radio has made it so that everybody and his brother can have their own radio show now. Yeah, and and that's not always a good thing. <laughs> Sometimes you get some really great gems, but overall, you're you're wading through a lot of garbage. And that I even do that now, looking for podcasts. You know I me, mean? I try, and I'm like, oh, this is terrible. Like, why yeah. am I listening to this? It's you guys don't even have it together, and people think they can sit around. Get hammered, which, hey, I don't care what substance you're doing as long as you're coherent. You know, it, you, I don't know. It's, it's a lot harder than it seems. And I think some people think they can just do it and they probably shouldn't. I'm good. I'm sure I'm going to get shit for that. Me saying that, but it's true, you know? But that's what I always say. I always say just because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. You know, you have to think about what is my ultimate goal here? What is my purpose with this? I didn't want to have a paranormal show. I mean, I, I did, but. I was very worried about about doing it. I was uh, I was offered the chance to do my own radio show at the station where I was a, a you know a third man in on a on a sports talk show, and they said you know we really like you but you don't really get a chance to you know be yourself and really talk on this show. We'd like to give you the chance to do something else, and and I pitched the idea of a paranormal show. But as we're putting it together, as we're spending those months trying to build the show, I would frequently look at Matt Costa and ask him. You know, do you think this is the right way to go? Do you think I'm I'm knowledgeable enough in this in this subject matter to be able to to host a show on this, or will I just be making myself look better by having this? You know, it's 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 one thing if you want to go and talk on a on a on a radio show and you're just talking about yourself or talking to your friends. But one of the first people to agree to come on my show after a blind email and a blind phone call was John Zaffis. And Keith oh, Johnson was our first guest. So right out of the gate, I'm getting yeah. people who are respected. And so yeah. I start to say, I don't know if I'm up to this challenge. And we had a long conversation and we figured out, listen, if all I'm doing is just being the voice for the audience, and what the audience wants to know, we'll be fine. And so that's the approach that we always took. But no other shows, uh, you know, that I shouldn't say no other shows. A lot of these other shows don't look at that perspective. They say, how can I do this in a way that's going to get me noticed? And that's not the kind of radio that I want to listen to or that I want to do. Yeah, no. And I I mean, I do this for fun. I mean, I I would do it professionally if I could. I mean, just because I enjoy it. But if I think there's a lot of people who don't enjoy it or they're just it's, it's about money and attention and all that. I mean, I think you have to enjoy what you're doing to an extent. But by the way, while you're talking about like, uh, was it Keith Johnson? I think is what you said. Like those yes. early shows, I mean, I know you still have those people on, but that's what really sucked me in to your show initially when I found it was that there were all these people I'd never heard of. And then I'm like, oh, and they're all in Massachusetts. And then you did a show on, oh, what is the trifecta area that's like the Bermuda Triangle? Oh, the Bridgewater uh, Triangle. Yeah, those shows were great, too. You guys would send people off like people would do remotes and call in. And that was some great radio. Like uh, I'm in the woods walking around and it's scary to listen to, you know. And what's great is now with the video aspect, we have them go Facebook Live. So not only can you hear them on the radio, but if you're watching them. on the video stream, you can see them live as it's happening. It's, it's, oh, the yeah, technology is amazing. That's going to sell me on the video stream because I want to see that. Because well, well that'll be coming up in September. We haven't nailed down the date yet, but we'll, uh, we'll probably be doing it in September just so that we can get it done before it gets uh, too cold and, and paranormal people get too busy in October. Yeah, and if memory serves right, didn't some, something grab you at the Lizzie Borden house too? Oh yeah, I've been thrown up against the wall there. I've been uh, I've been thrown down stairs. I've been choked. I've been scratched. I've been growled at. I've been sworn at. Yeah, the Lizzie Borden house doesn't like me very much. Yeah, that was one of the first things I remember hearing about. I'm like, what is up with this? Like, because I mean, most people know who Lizzie Borden is, and I mean, if you're into true crime at all, you certainly know. And you guys, you do all kinds of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like weekends and stuff. You were doing at one point too. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. We have uh, we have our our events that we do where we take people into these places because I think it's important for, see, I never thought I was going to be a paranormal investigator when I started doing this. I thought I was sure. just going to be an armchair quarterback talking about this. And when Matt Moniz joined the show three months in, he said, uh-uh, you're not going to sit here and talk about this without getting out there and experiencing it for yourself. So now we've just found ways to have other people have those same opportunities. And it's, it's nice because if you call up a, a, a place and say, hey, we want to come and do a paranormal investigation, they say, no, absolutely not. But if we say, hey, we want to come and run an event where, you know, people are going to come and they're going to pay money and you're going to make a couple of thousand dollars for letting us walk around in the dark for a few hours, they say, hey, that sounds great to us. So, sure. you know, we've, we've been able to be uh, 
we've been able to kind of be that intermediary to get people into these places that they'd never have access to otherwise, which, and then to see somebody have their first paranormal experience while they're doing it is even more rewarding. Yeah, it's great. And and if you haven't had the experience of, you know, Oh, that none of that's real. I've had several myself and I've had, I've had them in broad daylight. Um, there's a place in Michigan that used to be a sanitarium and, uh, where a bunch of people died of tuber- tuberculosis and you can walk like, there's trails and stuff. Of course, they've turned it into a park because that sounds reasonable, right? So, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Of course, I had I had an audio something whispered in my ear in broad daylight when we were walking. Crazy. See, I mean, those you know, those are the kind of things that I I live for. Those those are what I do this for. Those those type of experiences. Yeah, it's just it. It's so um, giving people the opportunity to have those experiences is great as well. I know chat room, you want to call in. I know WR two fifty. There's a way for them to do that, but they have to get into Discord. We're working on a phone. <laughs> We're a small operation. <laughs> yeah, jump on the Discord. Did anybody drop the Discord link in the uh, in the chat room? I think so. If not, WR he'll get on it. Because, yep. I want to hear your voices. I, I I read your names all the time. I want to hear your voices. Yeah, and I want to talk to other people too. Like this, I'm not trying. Like not that I don't enjoy talking to Tim because I'm enjoying it. But if you guys have questions for him, we are more than willing to like take your <laughs> verbal call. Uh, in the Discord chat, Bart L. Producer, ask him about the ghost in the bathtub. That might be my favorite all time piece of evidence that's ever been caught at one of our events. Oh well, by all means, tell us about the ghost in the bathtub. Oh well, this is the, you're in for a treat. If you if you Google search uh, "spooky South Coast bathtub ghost," you can you can see the video for yourself. But so there's this. Uh, wow, Juan just mentioned the uh, creature double feature theme song in the chat room. Anyway, not nice. to get sidetracked. Uh, so funny. the the uh, the place that we're at is the uh, Murdoch Whitney House in Winchenden, Massachusetts. It's a it's an old mansion that has a, a long history, but not a lot. Didn't have a lot of paranormal history before we started investigating it. But in the basement there, we've had a lot of experiences with shadow people. And while we were having uh, these experiences, uh, there was a, a deaf girl that was with us. And because she couldn't really sit there and hear us talking about these shadow people, like I said, why don't we go over into this other area and we can investigate in a way that works for you. And she had the SLS camera system, which uh, for anybody unfamiliar, it's basically an adapted version of the... Microsoft uh, Connect camera, the Xbox Connect camera. It maps the movements, human movements. And so what it'll do is when it detects a human being making human movements, it'll map it out as a stick figure. So you'll be in a place where nobody is in front of the camera and all of a sudden a stick figure will show up. Now, it has a lot of false positives, so it's not really very dependable unless you can actually have some sort of interaction with what's there. And as we're in this one part of the basement, there's an old clawfoot tub and when she pans the camera over to that old clawfoot tub, it looks like there's a person just relaxing in the bathtub, taking a bath. Oh, and to see the stick figure appear in that form, in that shape, as if it was in the tub, caught my interest. And we're sitting there watching it. And as we're talking about it, we're like, wow, this is really amazing. It looks like there's another figure next to it that's washing it. And this guy's just sitting in the tub, and he's splashing the water. And, and all of a sudden, we see what looks like his hand Oh, move no. down to his crotch area. And then it moves back again. Almost like it's trying to see if we're realizing what it's doing and if it can get away with it. And then eventually, he moves his hand to his crotch area and grabs hold and starts making a motion, you know, kind of up and down. Sure. And it's going just enough up and down that it's probably the size of the average male genitalia. And uh, and it keeps going back, and so we're sitting there like we're watching this ghost masturbate, <laughs> and eventually, the ghost, being the, the the dirty bird that he was, grabs on with the other hand too, and he's he's going two handed for a while. <laughs> wow, intense! And one and the one of the girls that was with us as we were investigating is like talking to him, and as she's talking to him, he's like doing it harder and faster. So it's uh, it was it was very very interesting. I took the footage. We took the footage upstairs and put it on a TV for the entire group that was there. That now we had about thirty forty people there. So we had the entire group. Uh, actually, no, it's a little less than that. But we had the whole group watch it on the television, and and then I just turned to them and said, "What was going on in that video?" And everybody, to a person, said that ghost was jacking off in the bathtub. <laughs> That's. Awesome. So, well, you know, that, that gives me hope on many levels because when I die, it means that maybe there's just still fun to be had. Not Unless- only that, but 
not only that, but there's no shame anymore. Right. So you'll, you'll just be doing it everywhere in front of everybody. That's right. It's not going to matter. It's going to be fine. Unless You're going to be like a monkey in the zoo, you know? Like, hey, you guys want to see a show? Here you go. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. That's awesome. I, I that's that's an amazing story, and I can't believe I didn't know about that. But that's that's great. Oh, I'm watch glad. the video. It's on it's on the Spooky South Coast YouTube channel too. When you see it, you'll say, "Um, there's no doubt about it. That's exactly what he's doing." Yeah, oh, that, that's great. And then, what, what is the other? There's resi- oh, unless it's a residual haunting, and it was just somebody who has been there forever. <laughs> they just left an imprint, which could totally be possible, right? Well, that, that is ghost penis must be pretty raw by now, then. Oh, that's rough, man. They gotta have ghost lube. Yep, we're going down this road. Oh, it's normal on what I do. That's great. Oh, now they're talking. To, somebody in chat said that it's a matter of time before someone starts a Bigfoot porn channel. No, that's already happened. Did you not see that come up in the news a few weeks ago? There was, a, I believe it was a candidate for office that had to step down because they found out he was into Bigfoot porn. Yeah, no, Bigfoot porn's out there. It's real. Oh, my God, really? That's true? Yeah. Yes. Wow, I did not know that. See the things I'm learning tonight. All right, do you guys have, seriously, chat room, do you have other questions for Tim since none of you are calling? Because apparently, apparently Discord must be challenging. I get it. Or just, I don't know, maybe the lady who... There was some lady who wanted to ask you something, and now I've lost it. I don't know, because I have uh, suspicions about who some of these folks really are. Oh, so, yeah. you know, I, I, I want to... Uh, I, I have a feeling that Dave Scott S.O.R. is actually uh, Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, but I can't be sure. Um, I think it's him, too. He has a good show, too. I like his show a lot. Oh, well. yeah, absolutely. I've, I've been a guest on I met Dave uh, at a Paracon last year. And uh, it was like we instantly connected. We're like, okay, we are two people that get it. A lot of the same stuff that we've been talking about tonight about shows, Dave and I are completely in agreement on uh, on those topics. So I, I, I find that there's a lot of good people that are doing the right work in this. And it's those good people that are, are they're building an audience for themselves, but they just, they need that opportunity to make the next step. Yeah, I agree. But he's one, I enjoy his show. I listen to it like he's, he's one of the podcasts I listen to. Because like we've talked about, there's a lot of garbage out there. Like, I'm glad to see that he's getting some recognition, at least. I, I'll just tell you this much. If, if, if you're looking for a paranormal radio show, and it's usually a paranormal group's radio show, let me just tell you that chances are they're probably just talking about their paranormal group. And if that's what you want to hear about, that's fine, but it's not what I look for. So uh, just kind of warning people about that. You know, you, I look for the shows. I look for the shows that the people that I'm friends with go on as guests. And that's how I know that, you know, that they don't suffer any fools except for having me as their friend. Then I know that the shows that they're doing must be pretty good quality. Yeah, and that's good. That's a good baseline because, like I said, weeding through this. And I like conspiracy shows, too, but it's the same thing. It's a bunch of people sitting around in their garage who don't really know what they're talking about. Like, I don't know. I want something middle of the road. I'm not saying those people couldn't be good, but I don't really want to hear you drinking beers with your buddy talking. You know, that's Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to hear you talking. I want to hear you interviewing somebody who knows more than you do. And I want to hear you. Uh, there you go. Bart L. Producer just dropped the uh, Masturbating Ghost video in the Discord chat. So if you're not in Discord now, get in there because yeah. you're, you're going to want to see this. Uh, yeah, but thank there's, you so much. But, but that's, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear you interviewing somebody that knows more than you. I want to hear you learn. And that's what That's what I think good radio is. And Art Bell never acted like he knew about uh, any, you know, he never acted like he knew about everything that was coming on. He knew enough that he could ask intelligent questions, and he knew enough that he could challenge people if if they were saying something that sounded like it didn't make any sense. But he never went into something saying, uh, here's what I think about something. And this is a problem in talk radio altogether these days, is it's people who have a position and have an opinion on something just bringing in guests to create an echo chamber that just back up their own opinions and views. Right. Which is boring as shit to listen to. It is. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's what leads to people, you know, crying out about fake news and, and uh, all that kind of stuff. I, I watch, I'm not afraid to admit, you know, when I watch the news, I watch CNN. I come home from work, I put on the TV, I watch CNN. And I know that the CNN hosts uh, are not journalists. They're, they're hosts. And they're not even anchors, they're hosts. And they have people on that will just back up their opinions. And I understand that. And you can be entertained by that if they're doing it in an entertaining way. But it's not going to be an educational thing. It's not going to be something where you can walk away with it feeling like, I think I got all sides of that issue and can make up my mind on my own now. It's you're watching a certain viewpoint 
and you're watching it because you either agree with it or disagree with it. I want to be able to learn when I listen to a paranormal radio show. I want to be able to learn if I'm listening to anything. If, I, if I'm taking the time out to listen to whoever, I want to take something away from it. You know, I mean, I listen to a lot of stuff at work because I have a, a day job, like a nine to five job, and it's a desk job. So I'm listening to stuff all day. You know, I, I mean, th- but there's also stuff out there that sometimes you just want to be entertained. So I mean, if anybody has never heard of John Tenney, you have to download his podcast, Realm of the Weird, and he has a number of other projects that he's done. But Realm of the Weird is just perfect. It's little fifteen minute glimpses into the weirdness of his life you know that's something that you can put on when you don't have time to listen to an entire radio show and you just want to be entertained for your drive down to the supermarket and a little 15 minute bite you know that kind of stuff can exist and if that's what you're into people should do that you know they should there's no shame in putting out a show that's that that's just you sharing your thoughts and opinions but don't try to make it seem like uh you know you're going to be offering some sort of uh uh you know something that somebody else isn't doing you know, that you're the truth, that you're the one person that's the actual shining beacon in all of this mess, and just have it turn into a, a bunch of garbage where you want people to regurgitate your viewpoint. And I, I think that's a lot of what's wrong with it. I think a lot of these people, it's all about their ego. You know, they they want, and that's where you lose me too. I, I don't know. You know, again, I'm, I do this for fun, so I'm not in it professionally, but man, the ego's getting in the way a lot too. Yeah, that's that's the... That's the thing that is the dirty secret to a lot of this paranormal stuff is it's and I'm, I don't mean any insult to anybody out there, but it's a bunch of people who were not the popular kids in school who finally have something where they fit in and they don't have the social skills to know how to interact with each other. They don't know how to deal with having some sort of a spotlight shown on them and it goes to their head and things go wrong. That's what that's how the paranormal media goes. That's how the paranormal groups have gone for years. And and that's why we have to kind of be able, be willing to look it in the face and say, this is the problem. This is the issue. And then we'll be able to get past it. But the problem is now is everybody likes to jump under this para unity cloud and say, can't we all just get along? No, there's no need to all get along. We just have to respect each other and give each other space. We don't have to agree with each other. Yeah, and I think that's that goes for any community you're in because it becomes a hierarchy at some point. And it doesn't need to be. It shouldn't be like that. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's the biggest problem is that... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, discourse and, and disagreement is looked on looked upon now as being a fight you know you can't debate something anymore because if you try to debate somebody on something or even if you try to point out where somebody might be incorrect you're viewed as a bully or a troll which is the other thing that really bothered me about this whole uh, bullshit situation is that everybody that was in Belgab and now Elgab was getting called a bunch of trolls but in actuality the trolls were the ones that were causing all the problems we were keeping things to ourselves we weren't going out and infiltrating all of their message boards and, you know, we weren't going out into all of their Facebook groups and, and dropping comment bombs and then leaving. Like, we were kind of keeping it to ourselves. A troll is a person that just keeps it going to keep the fight going to make themselves feel better. So the people who were calling us trolls were actually the trolls in the long run. Right. right. But that's, I mean, that's just what's going on in general with everything. Like having a different opinion is seriously frowned upon. So yeah, I understand. And WR250 was upset about that too when we were talking about how the people in the fringe group came on and said everybody at LGAB is evil. Well, for the people that aren't involved in this, like that's a huge ugly blanket statement to make, you know. Right. Right. And that's the other thing too is you don't want people to uh fall like you said there are some people who are sick and don't really understand that some of this is just shtick, some of this is just right our way of kind of venting out our frustrations about everything in the world and focusing on this little stupid and significant radio show that doesn't really mean anything right. in the long run. But we're just, we're taking everything that's going on in the world and filtering it into our hatred against a person that we've never even met. And right. it, it doesn't mean anything. Nobody's actively trying to, uh, you know, ruin somebody's life and until you start trying to ruin other people's lives and then it's turnabout's fair play. But right. what ends up happening is, is, you know, you're viewed as the axis of evil because you're just kind of venting. And it's because they're trying to control that narrative. The the holier-than-thou attitude that came out of that whole camp was the most disgusting part of the whole thing. Because there's nothing about you that makes you any better than the, the folks that you were railing against. In all actuality, you know... 
I, I don't I don't really want to get into the nuts and bolts of how we could attack each person, but let's just sure. say there's plenty of dirt on everybody that it, had the folks actually wanted to be on the attack, it wouldn't have been very hard. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, it, you know, again, and I, I like how you summed it up perfectly. It's, it's mind-blowing to me that a woman who hasn't done a show in I don't even know how long it's been since Heather's been on has a thousand pages on a forum. Like, that's incredible to me. Right, but it's still it's it's still the same thing though. It's still the venting. I think that in all on all honesty, you know, ninety percent of the people posting in that thread really don't give a shit if Heather ever comes back and yeah. really don't care about what's going on in her life. But the problem is we're using that as an avatar for all the frustration that we have on everything else. So when we get really frustrated, we get right. really mad about everyday life, we say, I wonder what Heather did today. And then we go and we look and we go and we bitch about it in a thread. Right. And well and I think a lot of it too is that old like wow, I'm not as crazy as I thought thing. You know, you want to feel better about yourself, as awful as that might make me sound. But I go in there and I'm like, wow, I'm so not as insane as I ever thought. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I've always thought I'm pretty insane, so I don't know if I can ever reach that point. But the the good thing about, you know, having this, you not being the only one perspective is when you look at the... When you look at the us versus them, when it has to become an us versus them, I just look at it like this. I look at the kind of people that are them, and I look at the kind of people that are us. And I look at what we do, and I look at what they do. And I come out of this looking and saying, you know what, maybe we are a little bit crazy for getting so worked up about something that's so insignificant, but at least we're not them. So, yeah. Yep, and I think it works not just with that thread. It's it's a whole full circle thing, you know. I mean, it's it seriously been enlightening to talk to you. Like, you have some great points, and I, I'm so I can't even tell you how happy I am that like you and Dave Schrader have gotten together, and this is what Midnight in the Desert has become because it gets back into like it's so funny that the thing that she was so against happening, like you know, nobody is Art's legacy, but there are definitely some people who can step up to the plate and continue doing what he was doing. Well, that is the legacy. The legacy is people being able to continue to explore these topics in a way that is appealing to people to tune in and listen. That's the legacy. The legacy is being able to continue talking about topics that people might not normally be accepting of and present to them the guests and the information and the viewpoints that they might come away and say, you know what, I didn't believe in that. And I still aren't sure that I do, but I'm at least willing to entertain the possibility of it now because I heard somebody talking about it for three hours on Midnight in the Desert. And now I feel like I've, I've gained at least some new information about it that will help me make a more educated and informed opinion. That's the legacy of Art Bell. It's not about who has what bumper music. It's right. not about who has what bumpers. It's all about being able to just keep people's minds open. And in the end, listen, I, I'm going to say something here that a lot of people might take offense to but a lot of people might agree with in the end all art bell was was a talk radio host and and that's it he was not the paradigm of virtue he was not the saving grace of the paranormal world he was a guy who just was looking for a topic to talk about hit upon something that he was interested in and that the audience was interested in rode that horse out for as long as he could stand to do it and turned on a bunch of other people to want to kind of do the same thing. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great thing unto itself. But let's stop attributing this huge thing here like, uh, you know, you're going to be the second coming of Jesus just because you're sitting in the same chair that he did talking into the same microphone that he did. Yeah, that has nothing to do with it. I mean, you're exactly right. It's about it's about people who are continuing his thought process because I've listened to you and I've listened to Dave. Neither one of you go in most of the time with like, this is my view. You just don't do it. And you entertain other views. Like I'm excited to hear Dave take calls because I haven't heard much of that yet. That's going to be fun to listen to. You know, oh, he's, 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 he's very good at it. He's very good at being able to, first of all, the, the hardest part of taking calls is keeping people to a question. Because especially when you're like, if you're hosting Coast to Coast AM, there's a lot of people who just want to get on there and tell their story to the to the larger audience and don't actually have a point to what they're doing. And he's always very good about keeping them focused on there. And, and you know, they'll start saying whatever they're saying, and he will just ask some point blank. Well, do you have a question? Do you have a question about what we're talking about? And and that's something that Art would always do. You know, that's that's something that uh, 
not every host will do. Some hosts will let people ramble on and share these experiences, and it's not fair to the guest that's sitting there listening to it. I've right. done shows as a guest where I've had to listen to people call in and tell me about every one of their paranormal experiences and never ask me a question. I'm Great, thanks. You could have done that on my show, though. When I ask for people to call in with their open, you know, paranormal experiences, this is kind of a time where we want to have people that have questions get them answered. So that's one thing that I think will be the, the, the best part of them eventually taking calls is keeping everything hyper focused and being able to get intelligent questions coming from other places as opposed to just the host. As great as any of us can be as hosts, we can always be made that much better by the audience bringing things that we never thought about. Yes, absolutely. And and even even doing shows like this where I'm doing a forum show, like I'm missing the phone line, you know, because I want other perspectives. That's what makes it fun, you know, and I think that'll be great to have somebody who's focused at reining people in because, God, that's got to be a challenging job. But it's that's the fun part, too, though. That's the challenge of it. See, people don't really like everybody was was talking about last night. I had a lot. I know that uh, that you didn't get to hear the show, but I was having a lot of trouble with the guest the guest oh from Lilydale, Dr. Neal, that the the phone kept disconnecting and I kept having, Keith had to play music and I'd have to reconnect. And, you know, it, I think in any other situation, the audience would be accepting of the fact of if Keith said, hey, listen, it's not working out. I'm going to throw on a rerun. I'm just going to run some music, whatever it would take to just get through the two hours that were left in the show. You know, I think people would kind of be understanding of that situation. But that's when I say, okay, here's adversity. I have to overcome this. I don't ever want to be comfortable doing a radio show i don't ever want to be comfortable with a microphone in front of me i always want to be on the edge because that's when you do your best work oh for sure i I think you just become a better broadcaster when shit goes wrong like when we did the first show of this again it's a completely different comparison i'm used to working with a group of people and at the last second things got switched around and there is nothing like struggling to really make you better at something in my opinion that way Absolutely. I mean, if it's those moments and those challenges, it's it's the challenge of having a, a, a shitty guest. You know, I mean, I don't think that'll ever happen with Midnight in the Desert because Michelle does such a good job of researching the guest and getting all the information together. Dave does his homework on the guest and knows what it is they're going to talk about so that, you know, he's one of those people, and I try to pride myself on being one too, that you can give them chicken shit and they're going to give you the best chicken salad sandwich you ever had. And I think that he has that ability, and I think that Art had that ability. Uh, and if I'm being completely honest, you know, I don't think that George Norrie has that ability all the time. Or if he does, I don't think he, he taps into it all the time. But it's, it's one of those things where that's where the challenge is for a host. Otherwise, you know, like if, if, if your job is, uh, you know, driving the same delivery route every day, you know, you kind of, it becomes mundane. And you're not even thinking about it as you go up and down the road every day. But that one day where it's raining out or where there's an accident or something that has to kind of snap you out of that mundaneness, that's when, you know, the adrenaline starts to pump. And that's what's good in radio is having those moments where you just you can't be comfortable anymore. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. It's fantastic. I'm looking at the time. I'm like, how much? I'm like, hmm. Does anybody else have questions? I mean, I, I'm enjoying talking to you, Tim. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I, know. If, I mean, if, and I'm sure you guys have other topics you want to get to without me rambling on, too. Oh, well, no, no. I mean, that we have a couple things we can talk about, but I just want to make sure I wasn't holding you up because I know you have a show tonight. Um, it's this has been fun, though, man. Seriously, I'm I've really enjoyed it. Um, do you have stuff you want to plug? Well, I think it'd be great if everybody that's uh, listening tonight came over to the Spooky South Coast chat room. I'm glad that the BART cast is on earlier than the Gab cast was, so that uh, the audience can still have time to go out and, and eat dinner or do whatever else they have to do before they join us for Spooky South Coast. But uh, it would be great if everybody kind of jumped in on the YouTube channel and, and was in our chat room there. I Listen, a lot of you have been coming in there, and you've scared away some of our regulars. <laughs> because they don't get it. They don't understand what's going on. But I think a lot of them are starting to get in on the joke, and I think that they're starting to enjoy the interaction. I love it when I look over and I see, you know, triple, double or triple the numbers that we normally have. But I'm also pretty pissed off because it's still not as much as that other stupid network gets on their shows. So why do they have 900 people and I've got 90? So the challenge is out there for all of you to start joining us live on Saturday night. So you can start tonight at 10 o'clock Eastern. We're going to be talking with Chris Carr and Clarissa Vasquez about, I'm going to say this wrong, paradelia, which is what they also call matrixing, which is where you look for, your, your brain is hardwired to look for chaos, uh, 
patterns and chaos. So this is why you show somebody a, a grainy photograph and they see a face. This is why you play for them the sound of white noise and they hear a voice come through. So it's about learning the difference between having that happen and having actual paranormal phenomena. And also about you know the psychosomatic nature of investigation where if one person claims they see something, everybody wants to see, see the same thing. So all of that will come into play in, in the discussion tonight. And I think it's going to get... If you liked how deep we got with Chris Balzano the other night on Midnight in the Desert, I think it's going to be much of the same tonight on Spooky South Coast. So... Yeah, it sounds great. Um, I probably, I probably will take a nap because I'm not normally up super late on the weekends. But um, I always catch you guys on the podcast uh, anyway. But I, it'd be fun to be in chat. And guys, we have to get his numbers up because that other guy cannot beat Tim. That's ridiculous. I mean, it that's, really, it, re- it really is. Like I don't, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm, I'm at least better than that guy. Oh, way better than that guy. I can definitely say that for sure. Um, all right, how many more Midnight in the Desert do you have? Yeah, get out of here. Uh, uh, me, I'll I'll be uh, I'll be hosting again in October for a couple of nights and okay. whenever they need me because I'm uh, I'm usually awake anyway. And so is Dave. So basically, Dave is back tonight. Is that what's going on? Uh, Dave will be back Monday. Oh, yep. duh, it's Saturday. I sound right tonight, Saturday. But uh, Dave will be back Monday and uh, he'll have a, a brand new show for everybody. And uh, then there's a uh, just when he goes on the Jericho cruise, both him and Tim are going on the Jericho cruise in October, and you can still get your tickets for that as well if you if you want to join them on the cruise. Uh, but uh, the time that they're gone i'll be filling in uh on the thursday the friday the monday and the tuesday which will be right in the heart right before halloween so that's when we can really get weird oh that's fantastic um seriously tim thank you for doing this i would love to have you back on hey thanks for having me i'd love to come back on again and sometimes you never know i might just pop in and and join in the conversation yeah yeah and that would be great too but seriously thank you so much for your time no, thank you, and uh, and I look forward to seeing everybody. Oh, thanks, Dave. Dave just popping it in the chat. Thankfully, he joined in late and didn't hear all the crap I was talking at the beginning of the show. Well, I looked up and I'm like, holy shit, Dave Schrader's in the chat room. Cool. You know? I was <laughs> like, that's cool. It was all good about you, Dave. It was just crap about that other guy. Yeah, we, we like you, Dave. So, all right, Tim. I mean, by any means, please feel free to join us, and I'm going to wrap up here with WR in a minute. So All, all right. See, you see everybody Thank in my chat room later on. Yeah. Hey, thanks, hey. Tim. Hey, Tim, can you uh, post a link to Spooky South Coast in the chat room? I will do that right now. Thank you. So, yeah, sorry, WR. I, I gave, You could have jumped in, but <laughs> we, we were kind of rolling. Um, if you had a question, I'm sure you would have asked him. Yeah, I, there you guys were rolling so good, I just didn't want to interrupt. No worries. Is there anything else we want to cover before we get out of here? Because I'm whooped right now. I think we got everything pretty much beforehand, before uh, Spooky Tim came on. Yeah, and seriously, thanks. It was great. I'm glad that he was my first interview, so Spooky Tim popped my interview cherry. Good for you, dude. (laughs) All right. It was fun. Um, By the way, I'm supposed to mention that everybody needs to go to LGAB and definitely click on some links for Bart L. We couldn't do any of this without Bart. Um, This show wouldn't exist. It wouldn't exist without WR250 either. He's doing all the heavy lifting on the tech side of it. And he offered to co-host with me, so thanks so much, man. Yeah, no problem. Also, when you're clicking, don't do it too fast. There's an algorithm that will track that and say, "Hey, this site's cheating," and they will not. Then they will cut the money off. Yeah, well, we don't want that. So yeah. you take advice. You know, cl- click when you're on there every once in a while. You know, you know, make make it look legit. Is what you're saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, I'm going to get out of here, guys. Um, next, I'm hoping to do this next week at the same time because it seems that the time worked out, and I would love to have more people on to interview. That was really fun. Um, not that I'm not opposed to continuing the Gabcast tradition if anyone else wants to host. And we are working on a phone. I promise you. We're going to get that. We're going to figure something out because a lot of you wanted to call and are having issues with Discord and mic problems and all that other stuff. So. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with just a regular Google Voice phone number so you can just dial your phone, dial the number, and you're on. You don't have to do anything else. Yep. All right, so if you want to play the outro music, um, I'm PBS, and the, and my co-host was... WR250. And we're out. We'll talk to you next time. Good night. Good night. This is the Bartcast, a podcast about your supreme leader...
is the Bartcast.